Hey guys, welcome back to the Spook Island and we are back for another video. So today, I'm going to be going through my top 15 shows of 2021. I have a hard time making this. Me and Kai spent a few hours yesterday doing it together. We told each other, right, let's be ready for it. This is a very hard, very hard decision. I've had to miss out some shows that I didn't want to miss out. Um, there's two that are joint bottom because I couldn't decide between them. Um, but other than that, everything has a place. My top 15 shows of the year, so let's get into it. So, uh, coming in at number 15, a tied, we have the Bad Bags tied with Marvel's What If. Now, these both deserve to be higher. They definitely deserve to be on this list, and I couldn't choose between them. I think What If did so well at taking some of the best stories we know and turning them on, on their head completely. Uh, and it has some of my favourite episodes on that show, on that list. There's There's so many good episodes. There's a couple that I didn't care for as much, but... Especially the last two more than anything. And you have the Zombies episode. Dr. Strange's episode was so, so good. And then similarly to that. The Bad Batch is literally. Star Wars, to me is basically. Like it, it Star Wars' version of a very good animated show. And I couldn't not put this on the list. With everything it did with. Um, Clone Force 99 and, and Omega. She, she's such a cool character. And, and Kai said this. I will talk about this when he does his list. But. It's very easy to make a character like Omega uh, kind of annoying, if you know what I mean. Because she's this young kid that always wants to help. And she knew what she was doing. She knew how to help uh, after after a while. And, like, I love all of all of the, the clones in that group. There's a couple episodes like What If that I didn't really care for as much. Because, again, 16 episode season... Uh, I think it was 16. Like, you have to have so much. And we got, like, the, the 70 minute opening the first episode. The last two were probably my favourite, along with Cad Bane's appearance. Everything with Camino, that was just so good. And that will be very crucial to the, to the universe going forward. But that is both of my number 15. Moving on. Okay, so in number 14, we have The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This is a Marvel show that I, again, couldn't put on this. I, I couldn't not put on this list. Uh, this has probably some of my favourite action sequences from any of the Marvel shows this year. Uh, the villains were good. I think the villains weren't as good as, say, Loki or WandaVision or Hawkeye. Uh, but the villains in this show were, were, were still very cool. They were still very different. They were a very realistic kind of group of villains, you know. And this show probably has... Some, the most um kind of realistic approach to it as well as Hawkeye uh with the the whole talk of you know what would happen if you did come back after five years and you don't have any any of the things that you did have before and I think they they cared they they had to tread really carefully what they did with Captain America's legacy um and I think it was just so so well done what they did and uh, and Captain America um I, I really like, I did like Falcon before, but the way that they, they obviously, when he gets his own show, it's, he's going to go up, but they, they turned him into, he's now Captain America, and it annoys me when people call him Falcon Captain America, or or the Falcon Captain America, or he's Captain America, like, you need, I think people need to understand, he is Captain America, this is what this show is for, he's Captain America, we've got Bucky, he's the Winter Soldier, used to be the Winter Soldier, but it's like, like, like the title at the end of the show says, it's Captain America the Winter Soldier, and, um, I'm really excited to see them go forward, I think it's gonna be so, so good, anyway, moving on, in at number 13, this might be a little bit of a controversial one, but I have Hellbound, now, this is one of three, uh, K-dramas, I believe I have on this list, uh, I think this show was really good i really liked this show i thought it was how raw and kind of realistic it actually was uh the fact that it had like a big cult approach it's based obviously off the webtoon but the fact that it's basically it's a show about a cult group who uh basically started to super uh, what's the word they, they were superstitious about these big things coming out and sending you to hell it's um, it is a lot, it, not a lot, I knew this show was going to be good, 
but even surprised me, which is why it's so high on this list, and it's such a raw take on a show that it has no, it has nothing to hold it back, like, it will stand there and show you someone getting burned alive, you know, and, like, it, if you, you've probably seen a show by now, but after episode three with the, the whole plot twist, that's only halfway through the season, and they still managed to pull something out of the bag, like, that, I really like this show, I really did, and I think there was, it's kind of cut in half, the show, kind of had the third part and then the second part, very well done, very well done, a very, very good drama this year, I think, and, uh, yeah, moving on to number 12, we have My Hero Academia Season 5, now, this is a, I have had to look at the season for these shows as a whole, uh, I cannot look at My Hero, all five seasons, I have to look at the season 5 alone, uh, as it premiered, just season, season 5 premiered this year, and I've, like, even if, even if I have preferred shows with with characters in, I don't want to do that because that's not my honest opinion. That's not me giving my review of the show in 2021, you know. And there will be some people out there who put other stuff higher. But for me, My Hero Academia Season 5 is here. The last five, six, seven episodes of this show is it's just phenomenal. And Tomorrow's Origin is one of the best things. I have seen and we will be doing a character list of characters who appeared in 2021 uh some of our favorite characters our top 10 favorite characters and he will be high on this list i can tell you right now but looking at the season as a whole i forgot there was even 25 episodes to this season like this really kind of felt like a, a uh, the, I, i'd like to say maybe it might be the, the a bit more of a filler season than usual, if that makes sense. Uh, I think this show really, really delivered on the ending. Uh, but then started out with five or six episode event of the whole tournament thing. That, to be honest, after a while, I didn't really care for who was fighting. And I know Kai will say this, but I know what they're doing with with Class B and the rest of the students who are not in Class A like kind of preparing everybody for what's going to happen next this show had an amazing ending but i feel like it was a little bit wobbly to start off with and there was a few filler episodes that i thought there would be i thought there was uh more filler episodes than usual this season um so that's why it is at number 12 moving on to number 11 we have just missing out on the top 10 we have invincible now this show is incredible this show does not deserve to be 11th on this list. It definitely does deserve higher. I think all of these shows deserve higher than the positions they have been given. But that's the problem with doing a tier, like a list. There's always going to have to be something that sets it apart from the others. And I really, really liked this show. I thought the end of episode, like the whole of episode one, I remember just sitting there. And I didn't know that was going to happen because I haven't read any of the comics. Um... But this show really, like, is so well made. Uh, and especially the, the last few episodes with, the, the with like, Omnia versus Invincible. That finale episode was just incredible. And uh, there are a few, uh, there are a couple episodes, not just episodes, there are a few storylines and characters I don't care for as much in this show. But overall, you have the, the massive team... Obviously, they get play rated and they have to cast new members for the for the for the team. And there are a lot of characters that I really do like in the show, um, and I'm so glad it's got season two and three coming. But yeah, Invisible in a number eleven. Moving on to a number ten. So in at number ten we have a my name. This is an amazing show when this come out i knew me and kai both knew this was going to be so good and this again is a show i'll say this for everyone but this is a show that deserves to be higher it definitely definitely needed to be in the top 10 because she the the the, the, the main character is probably one of my favorite female characters in a show and it's not it's so well done her character is so well done that the show is 
revolved around her is revolved around her and being this kind of like assassin who is just on the mission for one thing and she's done all these things over all these years to get to this one point and she uh, spoilers for the show but she realizes that all of that goes to waste when she realizes the person that actually killed her dad is the person who she like went to after he died and like there's so much in the show that is so good and it really really feels like like a experience it feels like a definitive ending it feels like a show that won't get any more seasons but it's fine if it doesn't because it comes to a full circle anyway like the show is about one thing and i can never see this again any more seasons and i would love to see more but i would not want to see more unless it was as good as this and i don't think you can make a show like a second season of this show as good as as, as, as the first season really really like this show very good moving on to number nine we have sex education season three this show we we waited uh, we waited a long time for this show um to come out finally come out and it got delayed because of covid and everything and this season delivered massively this season was kind of the season i put down in my notes here is the season that kind of delivered everything we've been waiting for there was so much built up over two seasons of this show uh, the season three delivered on so much and whether you are team otis and ruby or team otis and Maeve, i think you can really agree this whole season was so good um and it really does show the length of acting that these people can go to like this show made me cry at one point and it was a scene that i never thought would like get me you know it's not it's not an emotional scene it's just a scene that you have two people acting so well that actually feels real and um I did actually cry. I think I actually know I cried twice. I'm just happily admitting that. But this show really does so well. Uh, because it's it's never lost what it was, if that makes sense. This show's never lost what it was. And season three is probably... <laughs> like it, I don't, I, it's very hard to compare all the seasons. But this could be my favourite season so far. And... So glad we're getting season four. So much, so much in this season. I I loved it. Moving on to number eight, though. We have Mighty High season five. This show is so, so good. This is probably one of the best endings I have seen to a show, to a multi-seasonal show. This ending had to be perfect. This, this show has gone through so much and they 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 made a ballsy move to bring us back after the, the 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 second season because this show was so so well done the first two seasons fit perfectly and i remember when this show got announced it was coming back it i, I was very worried because i didn't think you could top this but i think this has a better ending than season two i do this ending is one of the best i've seen like i said to a multi season show and the two parts, the two parts of this show felt like two seasons. It felt like there was so much in the last season that it, felt, it really did feel like two seasons put together. And I'm so glad that it had such a good ending and there was so much they had to do. There was so much they had to get right for this season. And it delivered on all levels. Such a good ending. There's so, so many possibilities they can do now. Um burning spin-off show which is coming 2023 so excited for that and the korean version coming out this year uh i really am excited for as well so yeah that is in at number eight number seven we are having a uh, another korean drama in here the second of the three that are in this list squid game we have squid game and this is the one that annoys me the most this is the one that deserves top three if not it deserves top five if not top three and um it really does annoy me that this is in seventh place it's nothing against the show whatsoever 
this does really deserve to be high, like I said, but I just, oh, I just, opinionly, I just, opinionly is not the word, um, I just prefer the shows above, number seven, now this is the, the, the very controversial one, In at number seven, this one really does hurt. This is the one that annoys me the most because I sat there for about ten minutes trying to figure out a way if I can put this any higher, but I personally don't think I can. I think this show deserves to be in top five, if not in top three. Um, but Squid Game really did deliver. This delivered on our channel. This blew up our channel. I love the show. So it's such an amazing idea of a show, um, but my only reason there is the seven is because I just prefer to watch the shows above it. Like that's all there is to it. This show, like I said, deserves to be in the top three. This show as a whole is insane, but there is people out there who are putting this as number one, maybe because they haven't seen a Korean show before, but. I personally think there's a Korean show that come out this year that I prefer over Squid Game. And you will see in this list of what it is. But like I said, I love this show. I'm so glad everything everything massive happened for the show. And I really wish I could put it higher. Because I really do really, really like the show. Anyway, moving on to number six. In at number six, we have a Cobra Kai season four, the newest season to be released uh, this come out new year's eve i got it done within the day on friday and um it's just exceptional it really is it is my favorite season so far i really loved the show before now i love it even more now after season four it's such an original show it's so it is it, there's nothing like it there's nothing like it and the show just impresses me each season with how they can just uh, just get the cast back, like every single person from the original. If they turn up in Cobra Kai, the same people. There's no recasting. If they if if, if they they say no, then they just don't get him in the show. Like that is something that never happens in a show. It is. I think it's overlooked. You, you, you I don't think people understand how hard it is to actually do that, and. Um, the amount of, like, there, there was a lot of carriers in the new season, and I won't spoil it because I know it's only just come out. But this show is insane. It's my favourite season. The tournament at the end is so, so good. Um, and I cannot wait for season five. This show just impresses me with how many characters you actually care about in the show. Um, and, again, it's eight, ten episode seasons where... Uh, it, it, it's essentially about karate you know like that is what the show is about it's about relationships with people and the, the the what karate means to them you have three different dojos now which i i just love this show so much i love this show that's why it's so high moving on though to number five we're into top five number five is loki this show deserve to be higher it deserves to be higher uh i think the amount it covers it gets across in six episodes with the tva kang at the end or he who remains will be kang very soon um but the amount it covers and the amount of potential it does set up for a second season and going on into the mcu going into phase four with the the films and shows to come this show really does step up and i knew it was going to be so good but this like even even impresses me and this is probably the finale that surprised me the most out of all the marvel shows this year because i really didn't know what to expect but i knew it was going to be good but this like blew my socks off like the, the finale like i've never seen a finale be uh, 15 20 minutes of just a character talking i cannot Express enough how much I love Jonathan Majors as an actor, man. He is exceptional. Exceptional. I, I saw him at Comic-Con. He was so cool. 
and he is really what sells this show. Like, he has one episode at the end, and just kind of everything falls into place. It's so good. Anyway, moving on to number four. Just, just getting beat. Loki, just getting beat. Number four, we have WandaVision. Now, even though this show was not everybody's 100% cup of tea, I, it kind of, it did have a couple of problems with, with the stuff it was teasing and the thing with Pietro was probably the, the, the bigger letdown for most people. I kind of saw this show as, like, it, it, it is a revolutionary show. Like, I saw Quicksilver reacted like everybody else, but then if you think about it logically, are they really going to introduce... And X-Men Quicksilver through this show, you know, and they did, uh, they obviously confirmed after the show that the reason they done it was to kind of be like a meta and be kind of out the box and we, we're going to recast Quicksilver, but it's going to be the Quicksilver you guys already know. I think they've done that not realising what was going to happen, you know, what what they were actually going to do when they, they, I guess they thought doing that. It's like a cool, like, funny, like, kind of like an Easter egg. But it wasn't. Everybody took it more than that, even myself. Um, and they kind of did set herself up for failure with that. But the show as a whole was just insanely good. Insanely, insanely good. And um, I have never been so intrigued into the episodes like i this is the only show the only marvel show that i have watched like breakdowns of every episode i've had theories every episode talking about what i thought was going to happen and i think people do take for granted because it did come out in january what this show actually did for the mcu with elizabeth also her acting in this show is incredible uh the so same with with paul but yeah moving on to the top three this is where it gets really, really difficult. In at uh, number three, we have the highest ranked K-drama, probably of all time for me. But this deserved to be this high. Vincenzo deserves this place in number three of my list. There's a lot of people who wouldn't have seen this show. There's a lot of people who would have. This show for me, like I said, is my favourite K-drama of all time. This show is just, like, an experience. If you watch this show, you know how good it is. You know uh, the amount of length that they go to keep this show entertaining and to keep it so good. It's always on this top, top level. And I think the thing that impresses me most is that this show is 20 episodes, I believe, and they're all an hour long. It's not 40 minutes. It's not 50 minutes with credits. It's an hour long, 20 hours of a show that is like that's like two seasons of a show two three seasons that's like 10 films rolled into one this show is incredible and the way that it again a show that benefited like one division from a week to week release more than anything like this show every ending i was saying spoilers but every ending had some kind of cliffhanger to make you want more of the show and like the Marvel shows, I haven't been so impressed with, like, the release of a show. You know, like I, I like for the Marvel shows, I get up when they come out to watch them when they come out, and I haven't done that for any other show than Vincenzo. This come out three p.m. our time on Netflix because they come out Saturday and then Sunday, um, but it is so. This is so good. The characters, there are so many characters in the show. There's like 15, 16 different characters and like the, the, the chemistry between them all. The ending, so, so, so good. Now, this is just an amazing show. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I prefer this over Squid Game just a little bit. But this is so good. Anyway, on to my number two. We have... In at number two, we have Hawkeye. Hawkeye, my favourite Marvel show overall, I would say. I think this show is incredibly good. Um, this show 
made me go from having my least favourite Avenger, still liked all of them, but my lowest rated Avenger, to probably one of my favourite Marvel characters now. The same with someone like Yelena, she was so good in Black Widow, but this is even better, and that's a big thing. And, Kate, and then on top of that, they introduce a brand new character, Kate Bishop, who impresses me so much because it's probably one of the best adaptations from a comic book to a film, uh, to, to a show, sorry, on screen, that I've seen. Like, you have Iron Man, you have Captain America, but then Kate Bishop is so up there because she's so well adapted, and that all comes with Hayley Starfield and the writing of that character. Um... I really did think this was going to be my least favourite because of the fact that it's on a lot, lot smaller scale with Hawkeye. This show turned out insanely good and the fact that even we got Kingpin as well, Wilson Fisk, and yeah, he did get a little bit Disney-fied, but overall, I think they really, really did so well with this show overall and so, so good. I'm so excited to see them all back in the future. Number two is Hawkeye. Coming in first place of the year, number one. If you haven't guessed already, it is Arcane. It is Arcane League of Legends, the animated show. I have never been so impressed by a show in my life. I think this show is perfection. I think this show is perfection. There was nothing ever going to beat it. There was nothing ever going to top it. As soon as I finished this show, I was just in shock i like i say have never been so surprised by a show i knew this was going to be good i knew this was going to be good because i remember seeing the the the, the clip they released uh for this show reacted to it on the channel i mean in the reaction you can check out if you want it on the channel but i was just surprised i was like damn this looks cool this love the animation style looks really cool but I just thought it was going to be one of those shows that you kind of, like, it kind of puts you straight into the law. You need to know this, this, this. You need to know who this person is. And the story, you know, adaptations for games don't usually go well. They're not amazing. There has been some good ones like Sonic and, and other stuff. But this is perfection. This is animation at its best. This breaks new ground. This is some of the best if not the best animated thing I have seen in my life. Like, I genuinely think that this, this is probably the best animated um, show I have seen ever. And I cannot stress enough how good this show is. You, If you have not seen this show, please, please watch it. Just watch the first three episodes. If you don't like it in the, uh, the first three episodes, then you won't like the rest of the show. Because episode three is my second favourite episode of the, of the season. And um, I will always defend this show. Because there's people who really do seem to think that, that it's good, but they, they, they don't have a connection to the show because they haven't seen or played the game. I personally think... I personally would say that... If you don't have any idea what is going on, you have no connection to the characters at all, and you've watched the show, it might even be better. Because you're going into the show blind, not knowing what's going on. But yet, there's me, who has never played the games, who doesn't know what any of their characters were when I started watching the show. I only really watched this show so I could react to it for the channel because I knew a lot of people wanted me to. And I have come out of the other side after watching the show, this is my favourite show of the year. Like, when we do our favourite shows of all time, I can tell you right now, it will be on my list. So how can people justify the fact that you have to have some kind of knowledge of the games to watch the show? You don't. You don't. And I can warn you right now that Kai's list will annoy some people. But at the end of the day, it's our opinions. If you are not happy with any of my list, then I am truly sorry. But this is my opinion of the shows. There's so many shows. I haven't been able to cover all of them. If you want to comment what your top 15 would be, please, please do. 
um, and I can tell you whether I have seen the show or not. If you're if you're wondering, oh, how's this not got in? This is my favourite show. I might not have seen it. I have to be honest. There's a lot of shows I couldn't get around to watching, and I wanted to watch this year, um, and I wore a later date. But yeah, that wraps it up for this um, a top fifteen list. Arcade in a number one. It couldn't be anything else. It couldn't be anything else for me. It couldn't be anything else. Like I said, if you want to comment your top 15, top 10 shows down below, uh, we have a lot more of these coming. I'm going to do ones for films. I'm going to do ones for worst films of the year. going to do ones for best films of the year. going to do one for my favourite characters of this year. Um, Kai is going to do all of his as well. Uh, so get ready for those. Uh, but yeah, comment your down below. Top 10, top 15, whatever you want to do. Uh, and if there's a show I have missed out, then let me know. If there's a show that I haven't seen, let me know. I mean, there's I have seen a few other people's list on YouTube, and there's a there's a few shows that I really wanted to watch this year, but never got a chance to. But anyway, this is my list. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. This is only my opinion. Please don't get offended. Take care and peace.